The Caravan of Progress Life is perpetually hale and hearty because it is God. This life is in you and through you. It is yours. Indeed, it is you and you are it because you and life are one. You and life are interwoven as certainly as the figure is interwoven with the rug. No room in your system, therefore, for any disarrangement. Life knows no such abnormal condition as you describe, since life is God, the jealous God who endures no interference. Yes, God is the all and the only of your being. You cannot be otherwise than well-built and well-maintained in every part and detail. This is why you can say, Perfect God and perfect woman, and I am the woman. Talk these truths to yourself understandingly from day to day. Thereby you will receive a good treatment. I will stand by you. But through your own efforts, as indicated above, you can accomplish a great deal. Your letter of July 6th has arrived. Now, the indisputable fact is that life, in all its radiance, is coursing through you. There is no inaction or overaction at any point to cause buzzing or heaviness or kinks or aches and pains. Just silently realize, many times a day, the ceaseless motion of illimitable energy. The kingdom of God is within you, that is, the reign of peace and health is established in your domain. There cannot be any heaviness for you when you recognize that your structure is spiritual. Stand still long enough once in a while to consider that life, in all its vigor and glory, insists upon springing into visibility through you, and that in this process of visibilizing itself, life, now yours, loses none of its potency or determination to live. It is grand to hear of your improvement. Of course those legs and knees and all other items in your makeup are in perfectly good order and full of strength and locomotion. Anyhow, your structure is spiritual, so you cannot be otherwise than light and feathery in your movements. Life is ceaselessly flowing through you to the remotest corners every moment of your existence. It is the very nature of life to live, that is, function and move. It is fluid, no possibility then of sluggishness. Perpetual motion is its rule. It is clear from your last letter that you are developing a courage and resourcefulness that will lead out into a larger way of living than you have experienced in the past. You have all the capacity needed to round out your career. Just set your thought to the enterprise every morning and keep on the move till the next day. You cannot help but take your place in the caravan of progress. As you follow this procedure, spirit forms you anew and even builds your affairs into a satisfying structure. Mind is looking after you at all times and in all ways. You are not forgotten for an instant. Mind works as ceaselessly as gravity does. And you know gravity does not overlook you or the tiniest particle of dust. It operates on everything, everywhere, and always. Mind operates constantly and beneficently on you and in your behalf. It directs all the functions of your economy. 
It directs all your business affairs. Have confidence. All is well, as presently you will find. You are doing nobly when you refuse to think and talk of feet and legs and knees, but rather cling to the indisputable fact of perfect God and perfect me. This me, or you, is just filled with the energy of uprightness and stalwartness and the ability to be about the affairs of everyday existence. Life is uninterruptedly swift and supple. It knows nothing about stiffening or settling down. You have all the freedom and harmony of action that you had when a girl. These qualities have never departed. They cannot because they inhere in the life you live day by day. This life is more than in you and through you. It is you. You are identical with it. The prophet of Galilee so admitted when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Make the same admission yourself every hour. You will be surprised to see how much it will do toward breaking up the infirmity. Mighty glad to hear of your deliverance. Better keep up your work along the line we have been pursuing for a while. Sometimes people retire from their curative thinking and effort too soon. So far as that goes, it will be a good practice for you to remain mentally alert, thinking out different aspects of truth and applying them to yourself for years to come. Life always was and always will be. This is why Shakespeare observes that we are made of the stuff eternity is made of. Life, then, is God, and he is all there is to you. He makes himself manifest through you, establishing life throughout your whole structure and this life, so individualized, retains all its glorious qualities, the quality of eternality among them. Hence you have no choice but to live on and on, nor has anyone else. Now proceed with more courage, and act as having dominion over all contingencies. You have it. Use it. You will enjoy the adventure. Remember that those pains and symptoms are not in your world. They are in a world of dreams and mesmerisms. They are in a world of wild unreality. You live in the world of reality, of strength, of peace, of beauty, of security. Those things of distress and danger cannot come into your experience. Life is coursing through you now in that invariable fashion which compels every function to be up and doing its work without protest. This means that there cannot be anything out of order in you, no inaction, overaction, or any sort of action except the invincible action of a life which does not begin, or lag, or fear, or sicken, or ever think of coming to an end. Talk to these impostors called symptoms, which are trying to distress you, and tell them what you think about them. You think plenty, do you not? Use strong language. The occasion more than warrants it, it demands it. <laughs>